Welcome. We believe this subject of the family is going to be helpful as we discuss. So, Bishop, yes. just start us somewhere. Yes. With the, uh, the, we begin with the Nigerian challenge. Uh, what you know, yes. what you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, what I know is uh, a sister, very famous and blessed yeah. sister, passed on. Yeah. That we know. Yeah. Uh, what we know, uh, what we're hearing yeah. is that there was abuse. Yeah. Um, that is neither here nor there mm. because uh, unless somebody was there, it's was an eyewitness, yeah. you know, to that effect. Yeah. What we know is, of course, again, the church has been blamed yeah. uh, for abetting uh, domestic violence in the name of uh, stopping divorce mm. because God hates it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And of course, what else we know is that uh, there is a lot of um, back and forth, a lot mm. of discussions, a lot of opinion. Yeah. And for the first time, I've seen people who are saying, I've always waited for this moment <laughs> because I've been through divorce and yeah. I, have, I walked away. And, and so everybody's walk away, walk away, walk away. A little lifting of the finger, it, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah, I'm out of here. And, and so that's where we are at right now, Apostle. And yeah. uh, I felt it's very important that you and I, of mm. course, with the wisdom that God has given us yeah. through scripture, mm -hmm. to just shed some light. Because out there, there could be people who are already buying into a lot of nonsense, mm -hmm. which could end up hurting more than, you know, helping. Yeah. And so I thought if we could begin by looking at really, what really are the issues here? Yeah. What are we looking at? And mm. what, how do we respond to situations like this from a biblical worldview, like you said? That's excellent. Yes. And as we get into that, we, of course, appreciate that uh, domestic violence is not just within the non-Christian world. Yes. It's also among the Christians. Yes. Like now we are hearing and seeing yeah. and more people are coming up. Mm. Let's describe the different types of domestic violence because it's not just physical. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, you know, in your counseling and pastoral yeah, yeah, leadership yeah. Mm -hmm. over the years, you've seen all manner of yeah, you know, abuse, troubles that uh, women yeah. or even men yeah. have gone through. Yeah, yeah of course. The, you know, Apostle David, the most unfortunate thing is a lot of times <laughs> people never talk about violence that's <laughs> meted against men because ordinarily <laughs> it's very shameful yeah. or is an, an African yeah, an for African. a man to say or to say, you know, my wife either beat me or chased me <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, that is. It doesn't have. <laughs> you should be the one doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> so there are so many men who will be suffering in silence. There could even be pastors. Yes, being battered by their wives. Of course, they are. They are beaten, and then they come and preach. And they, morning. they come and preach Jesus. and encourage, and <laughs> and they just praise her from the pulpit and, and make things nice. Yeah. So, so these are realities, and this just goes to show that we are human. Mm. So, so to go back to what you had uh, asked, you know, violence comes in many forms. It yeah. could be emotional. Yeah, emotional violence. Emotional, where someone does something that emotionally strains you, either mm. subjects you to some very difficult emotional uh, state mm. where either you, you they make you angry yeah. and they don't even care that you're angry yeah. or they subject you to anxiety situations where mm. like, you know, I leave my house, I don't tell my wife where I am. Yeah. I am out midnight, she has no idea, my phones are off or she calls, I'm not picking. Mm. Those things do happen in, yeah. in homes and families and mm. they are very, very unfortunate. Of yeah. course, we also have a, a verbal abuse mm. where someone, you know, has insults and unprintable words. Yeah. And, you know, and this is very common. Mm. It is very common. People hear hard things. and. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to stereotype. Yeah. I think ladies usually will be quite quite quick to quite speak. To speak. And, and usually they will say some things. And of course, there are men who also yeah. are very verbal. I've, yeah. I've, I've come across in my counseling sessions men who are extremely violent mm. verbally. Mm. And then there is, of course, uh, physical. Yeah. Physical is where now people are subject to either blows by hand mm. or some blunt object or some stick or something. Yeah. That happens and is very, very unfortunate. I still remember many years ago, it, yes. because I've interacted with you for many years and yeah. listened to a lot of your teaching. <laughs> you said if a, if a, a, a brother or sister <laughs> is beaten uh, physically in the house, yeah. before they come to the pastor, they should go to the police station. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you saying that. You may I, not remember. I still hold that view, although I'm not too vocal <coughs> anymore. Me. I guess yeah. with age, 
Yeah, with the age I have toned you, down, you, you and down. I realize that police may not help. Uh, yeah, you're right. I, I got, I, you know, those days I used to think the policemen uh, are good people. Yeah. Then only to discover that you go to a police station, and the first thing the police officer will tell you, but uh, what is wrong with being slapped once or twice? <laughs> 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 I talked to a certain lady, and she told me she went to the police station, and she said, uh, uh, how many times were you slapped? Twice, she said. <laughs> My friend, we are dealing with people here who come here with dislocated jaws. You still look okay. Go and talk to your husband. So I began to realize, okay, I think he's not as straightforward as yeah, I think. Right. But basically what I was trying to say, Apostle, which yeah. I still hold, mm. is that um, any form of uh, bodily assault is criminal. Is actually criminal. By common law. Absolutely. Before we even get to the biblical word, which is mm. our spiritual law. Yeah. Um, and I think we need to have people understand that even before we go so far into quoting scripture, doing yeah. stuff, if yeah. you descend to the levels of being um, bodily uh, violent or yeah. physically violent, mm. you have gone too low. That's correct. It, it's too low. And, and that's what you are saying now. Mm. If our moral values and practices are not informed by a higher law mm -hmm. than even the, 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 the government law, yeah. then we have lost it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we are here to say, uh, when we analyze what's going on in the body of Christ, and particularly uh, in Kenya, yeah. and of course now Nigeria is the one on the spotlight, yeah. we realize there are problems. Yeah, there are problems. I listened to the pastor, yeah. uh, Dr. NHA. Paul NHA, yes. Uh, yes. He explained did. what led had happened three months before. Earlier. You know, so it's not something that the pastor was not aware. Yeah. I was very impressed to hear that actually he had talked to Dr. So-and-so. He mentioned the name. Mm -hmm. He had talked to another doctor, so-and-so. Yeah. Very factual. You know, yeah. very factual, actually. Yes. And they uh, were yes. dealing already with some health issues with yes. the lady before. Yeah. So the pastor was actually involved. Yeah. So uh, it's only that we also hear from, you know, other sources that she also decided not to kind of embarrass herself, yeah. embarrass the husband, the husband and embarrass the family. those mm. issues. And she kept really, yeah. you know, holding to the last minute, mm. which probably she may not have needed to do that. Yeah. Uh, maybe that was an extreme reaction. And yeah. we don't know whether it's part of the culture. Yeah. Because, you know, the African culture and how women are treated, you know, kind of just stay and, you know, suffer quietly and so forth. And so people are saying mm. to the church, yeah. no, 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 church, you should have, you yeah. know, are you trying to say, let people be killed mm. and so forth? Yeah. And I don't know why people like blaming the church all the time for every <laughs> little thing without looking at the good things <laughs> that happen. You know, they are not saying that, well, it's unfortunate we lost our sister because our music and our worship was oh, very, very powerful. powerful. And Amazing. it's very sad. Amazing. It should not happen. Amazing. Mm. And I believe um, we should not blame the church yeah. for just that one mm. as much as that's important because it's one soul. You know, Apostle, let me weigh in a little bit there. Yeah. yeah. You see, pastors and ministers of the gospel are sometimes caught up in a very tricky place mm. because... Um, you, you really, we, we know the heart of God concerning the family. We know that God loves and values the family. Mm. And clearly, even Jesus Christ in his words, he yeah. says that uh, when God put them together, it was meant for good. Mm. And no man, yeah. you both men here could include the two parties themselves yeah. or a third party coming from outside yeah. should put them asunder. Yeah. And so we also agree with God as ministers because we cannot go against God's ideals. If mm. God's ideals are that, when I bring a, ma a man and a woman together, I want them to stay together. So we want to try as much as possible not to be the agent mm. for the destruction of this union. Yeah. And so we tend to be, we try to be very neutral because you do not want to be the reason that people use to scatter. Mm. And you, you've been there before where yeah. you see someone coming to you and clearly what they are looking for from you is a stamp of approval yeah. to walk away. Mm. <laughs> Now, you don't want to do that. And then again, you realize sometimes families don't also give you the full information. Yeah. You find that a lady could be telling you something, but she has kept away some information. Mm -hmm. I've been frustrated many times by people in our church mm -hmm. where they come, they tell me something, but then later on I discover they kept a so lot of other very serious information, you yeah. know, and I didn't know. And so I wouldn't blame uh, Dr. Paul Eneche. Mm. I mean, he means well, mm. and I believe he has tried his best. And I'm sure given his profile and level of experience and maturity, yeah. he wouldn't be the kind of a man that would abate, you know, something like this. He would look at a brother in the face and tell, look, 
I don't think you're doing, you know, the right thing. I was also impressed that mm. it's a very large church. Yes, it's and huge. he had a personal touch with, with, with that, this particular with woman. I mean, that particular family. Yes. I mean, to me, that's that amazing. Is yeah, because you can imagine the thousands of people that will look up to him, and yet this particular one, yeah. he was able to provide some interface mm. that they, were, they dealt with. Mm. So, so I was just trying to say one of the reasons why it's very difficult for us is because you really don't want to be the reason that a family really separates. You really yeah. want to try and work out things so that they come to a place of consensus and mm. agree that, okay, we have this problem, mm. we can deal with it and we can recover. And we have seen families that have fought before, re restored and healed and yeah. completely, you know, re rejuvenated. Absolutely. And they look back at their history and they laugh at it. That's a joy. And there are many, many stories like that, Apostle. And so, yet, when one happens and things go wrong, yeah. you know, everybody's up in arms and like, you pastors are the ones making women get killed by their Christian <laughs> husband. <laughs> we, in, in essence, I like what you said about Jesus, yeah. saying, let no man separate. Yeah. Whether from within the, the union team, yeah. or from outside. Yes. So uh, we need to caution all these people on the online yeah. platforms. They must not be the ones actually giving advice to separate. Mm. Because if any man do that, then yeah. it will be against God's will. Yeah. And I think by the way, the way people react, they show us then they even don't believe the word of God. Yeah. They are not practitioners yeah. of the word. Yeah. They are just generally in religion yeah. and in churches, but they are not believing the actual principles of the word. Yeah. As it were, I know we, we're going to delve, delve into uh, stabilizing family. Mm. And then we're going to look in the second uh, session of this clinic, yeah. how we can advise what specific practical advice we can the give can, to both men and yeah, women yeah. to sustain and keep their marriages yeah. as it were. Yeah. For now, we realize there's a problem yeah. and there's emotional abuse, yes. physical abuse, yeah. you know, all that and mental verbal, abuse mm, verbal. and verbal abuse. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <coughs> and it must stop. So if you are listening to us and you're involved in a scenario where the kind of messages you guys are exchanging and the kind of things <laughs> you need to ask yourself, are you still a Christian? Are you still in the faith? Yeah. So bottom line, yeah. God is for the family. Christ yeah. is for the family. Yeah. I found this scripture in Proverbs 11, yes. 29. Yes. He who troubles his own house yes. will inherit the wind. Mm -hmm. I found that to be interesting yes. in yes. King James. Uh, 29, I mean, the same version, I mean, the same verse in NIV, mm -hmm. whoever brings ruin on their family will inherit only wind. So I think both men and women, mm. we need to ask them, are you right now mm. troubling your own family yeah. by behavior? Because there must be somebody who is a trigger. Yes. If everybody, since you got married, everything is okay. Everybody taking care of their bargain, mm. walking with God, following biblical principles and so forth. Mm. There'll, there'll be calmness and peace. Yeah. But it looks like somebody somewhere troubled the family yes. by an act and yeah. something that became like a strange catalyst that brought series of reactions yeah. that is causing the family inherit wind. Because yes. wind, you can't grab it. Yeah, it, wind basically is a description of emptiness, yeah. nothingness. Yeah. You know, Apostle, um, when, when you look at the discourse between Jesus Christ and the Pharisees in Matthew 19, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was one of the very interesting things. You know, divorce and separation and all these things yeah. is not just now. It was yeah. there. And you remember even from Malachi chapter yes. 2, yeah. where God through the prophet is correcting the nation of Israel for yeah. wantonly yeah. Uh, disregarding marriage. And I'm told those days the culture was, you know, people just divorce their wives for no reason. You come home, you're unhappy with your wife and you just give her letters of... In fact, I'm told a woman was a property yes. for the man yes. in the Hebrew culture yeah. then. So it was easy for the man to do whatever he wanted. Yeah, yeah. So 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 you 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 see they carried that. And at mm. some point, you know, these Pharisees they are coming to Jesus because I think it is it is still a hot potato like it, it is today. It, it has was. remained a hot potato <laughs> for a long. And and then they're saying, Is it lawful, you know, for a man to divorce his wife yeah. for just any reason? Okay, that's wow. the way it was. And then yeah. he answered to them and said, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning mm. made them male and female yeah. and said, for this reason, yeah. a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife. The two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, 
-hmm. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Then they went back and said, verse 8, <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. Uh, is it verse, verse 7? Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? Mm. Why did Moses do that when there's already a caveat by God that what he has put together, no man, no man separate? And I like what he says. Yeah. But, and this is still the same problem we're dealing with. Yeah. He said to them, Moses, mm. because of the hardness of your hearts, that's it. Yeah. And you said it. When two people come together and this issue of heart, yeah is not addressed mm. that is where the troubling of marriage comes in when two hearts are hard or one heart it's very difficult my brother to sustain this particular relationship so the divorce issue is so hot now yeah uh, bishop yeah that i like the scripture you just showed there yeah the hardness of the heart is the reason why people are behaving the way they are behaving yes and to add to what you say yeah in uh, malachi chapter two yes uh the the famous verse yes uh i noticed that god is not receiving the prayers yeah the weeping I, I, yes the tears yes chapter 2 verse 13 mm. this is the second thing you do you cover the altar of the lord with yes. tears with yes. weeping and crying yes. so he does not regard the offering yeah uh anymore nor receive it with goodwill from your hands so people are coming to church mm -hmm. coming to pray mm -hmm. to give yeah. to worship but god is saying nah, nah, nah. Mm. Then verse 14 says, yet you say, for what reason? He said, because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, mm. how you are dealing with each other, mm. with whom you have dealt treacherously or unfaithfully, mm. and yet she is your companion and your wife mm. by covenant. Mm. Then he says the following words in verse 15, mm. but did he not make them one? Mm -hmm. Like you said in Matthew 19, yeah. having a remnant of spirit. Now why one? Mm. He seeks godly offspring. Mm. Therefore, mm. take heed to your spirit, the mm. spirit of S. Therefore, take yeah. it to your spirit. Yeah. And then let none deal and faithfully with the wife of Israel. Mm. Then he says, verse 16, For the Lord God of Israel hate, uh, that he hates divorce, for it covers one garment with violence, mm. says the Lord. Therefore, take it to your spirit, and that you deal, you do not deal unfaithfully or treacherously. Mm. 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 Now, I find this statement, take heed to your spirit, mm. sneaked in in both ways. In yeah. other words, mm. the antidote to divorce is take heed to your spirit. Yeah. Take care of what is going on inside yeah. of you. Yeah the hardness of heart mm. if your heart you don't take your it to soften your heart mm. and you take these strange positions mm. you will you'll get in trouble and mm. the next thing i noticed mm. was mm. he has divorced because of a reason yeah the violence it produces yeah. so actually beyond the divorce is the violence. violence in fact god doesn't want any of his child weeping mm. in pain mm. whether emotionally mm. mentally mm. Uh, through abuse or physical mm. abuse mm. Th that is very serious for him you know when i find people uh, and i'm not defending you know violence yeah. i hate violence yeah and it must be condemned with all the force that we can master mm. but when i find people just carelessly trying to insinuate that at the slightest provocation yeah they just you know don't even walk away run that's yeah. what they are saying yeah. you know run bolt out yeah now that sounds very good and very uh but when you go back to scripture you realize that these things we are doing the violence is not just to the two people involved you yeah. know they are with children many yeah, times children. so the children will be recipients of this violence yeah then they are with the extended family they are yeah. both you know parents from both sides mm -hmm. when they brought you together they never envisaged a situation where this would happen because initially when your heart was soft yeah. you loved each other mm -hmm. you held hands everybody was happy and the two families and all the relatives were excited mm -hmm. now all of a sudden this violence has come in it is affecting everybody and then extended to friends and then to the church, the church. it is a very serious issue the number of people that will get into pain oh. are more than you can think or i'm telling you so it's it's not easy for just somebody to say just walk out and go because after you have gone, I like somebody put it this way. Yeah. Yes, as a woman or as a man, yeah. you are in trouble yeah. and you still got to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Staying is not easy. Yeah. Neither is going easy. Easy, yes. So you have to weigh the two. Yeah. You have to really take time with God yeah. with proper counsel. Yeah. 
and whether from relatives or from spiritual leaders yeah. before Lily yeah. you can come in here yeah. and but we also appreciate the fact that yes some people reach a certain point yeah, yeah. and they have to go they have to and when they have gone we cannot condemn them no, because what i we, discovered we with should, the spiritual issues yeah. is that uh, god allows us to make personal decisions true and those personal decisions have consequences as it were mm. and uh, but Nobody should put pre- pastors under pressure to make decisions for anybody. No. Never. No. Ours is not to make decisions. And yeah. I you said a little earlier yeah. uh, that uh, people present a certain problem in counseling they say somebody will bring present he will present a problem yeah. we call it the presenting problem. Yeah. It is in the second or third or fourth sessions. Yeah. They bring the real problem. <laughs> the real thing. <laughs> and you are shocked so the so, information has been here all along. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm told from some experts that even the police are picking your statement. Yeah. You shared you write a statement today. Yeah. Or you give your story today. Yeah. Tomorrow you meet another police and you give the same story. Yeah. But at that time your story will be different. It, and they tell you how to write a statement. <laughs> <laughs> Now they have the truth. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> but I think our intention tonight in the clinic is mm. to appreciate yeah their troubles, mm. their problems, mm. their difficulties. Yeah. And if a brother or a sister in the Church of Christ somewhere is going through all these pains, mm. we appreciate those things are real. Mm. But the Bible still remains to be the solution manual to all I these agree. challenges agree, and problems. Yeah. And I think that's why we have Bishop here and I'm here and we can share a couple of things. Mm. We will be doing that in the next uh, uh, session of this clinic so that we can still bring hope. Because yes. as we are, yes. we are, we are, we are traders yeah. our business is hope yes. bringing hope yeah, to the yeah. family we, we can never agree with every, anybody that there is no hope yeah uh, otherwise our job will be done absolutely <laughs> uh say something about the hope that is in the family then we take a short break yes. we only have about a minute yeah. and then we're going to come back and go into some practical things I, i think the hope there is apostle david is the fact that god is the initiator of family mm. god is the initiator of marriage it's yeah. not a human idea yeah and because god does not do things for fun mm. god does something with an objective with a reason and whatever god starts he backs up right so i think it's important for all those of people that are watching us and listening mm. in into this program they need to understand that uh, marriage is not just backed up by our traditional values and who we are mm. god is involved and that's why right you saw from the beginning in genesis chapter 2 to Malachi then to Matthew 19 mm. the message is standard it's the same yeah. that this is the way i intended it yeah. so if we can understand the heart of god i think there's a lot of hope and besides apostle there are so many wonderful marriages that yeah. are thriving. when yes. one plane crashes yes. Yes. we forget the 1000 good landings yeah. of the plane yeah. let's take a break <laughs> this apostle clinic very sensitive matters but by god's grace we we'll share a couple of things that could be of help to you we'll be back in a moment My name is Anthony Ndema. I'm your host for the Defining Moment. On the Defining Moment we share powerful stories. Stories of restoration, stories of redemption, and stories that encourage you. Everyone has a defining moment. For some, it's the Damascus experience. For others, it's a near death experience. What's your story? Share your story. Reach out to us. The defining moment.
Welcome back. This is Apostolic Clinic. Today we are dealing with the Christian families. And I tell you, matters have been very hot. A lot of pressure on leadership all of Africa because of the case of what happened in Nigeria. And of course, that leads us to what should we do concerning the family? Is there any hope? Uh, in the, before the break, of course, Bishop Stanley Malili right here shared indeed there is a lot of hope. And I want to add a say, like you say, mm. uh, Bishop Genesis <coughs> chapter 1 and 2, and then Matthew 19. I mean, Malachi, Matthew 19, I mean, and the Colossians and Ephesians, it's a lot of text. Mm -hmm. One of the things I felt the Lord speak to me mm -hmm. in the beginning of the year, because in the Apostolic House, yeah. we've been doing a teaching and a series on family. Mm -hmm. God gave me a commission to do that every Sunday. We are teaching on family. We've taught on men, women. Uh, now we're dealing with the re redemption, redeeming the family, uh, covenant, of the family, you know, family covenant. I mean, a lot of stuff. Wow. And now we've reached a point where now we're bringing a deliverance. Wow. Um, one of the key words that has come out is, what is a blueprint of the family? Mm -hmm. What was God's original intention? Mm -hmm. And I made a statement that surprised me and made me a bit uh, worried <laughs> when I was reading and studying. Yeah. That uh, one commentator said, there are only two, four chapters in the Bible that are very good stories about marriage. Chapter 1 of Genesis and chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And the Revelation chapter 21 and chapter 22. Yes. yes. In between. Yeah. Between Genesis 3 yeah. and, and, uh, Revelation and the Revelation 20. 20, 20. 21, yeah. <laughs> because there's a Babylon and there's yes, a woman yes, there. Yes, yes. She's, she's a terrorist. Yeah. And a that, that harlot mm. woman, mm. that means she's not under her husband. Mm. She's not under authority. Yeah. She's her own authority. Yeah. And then we have, you know, Cain killing Abel yeah, yeah. in the first murder, yeah. uh, you know, violence in mm. the family. Mm. And we have all these wonderful and strange stories mm. of mm. Abraham, mm. Isaac, Jacob, mm -hmm. David. David. Yeah, I mean, Solomon, so, Solomon yeah. Jesus, I don't know how he managed. So <laughs> there are not a lot of lessons. <laughs> inside there. <laughs> inside there. So the key word is blueprint. Yes. So in the next couple of minutes, yes, we talk about that. Let's try to describe the blueprint <laughs> because I don't know which other family of who can we study. <laughs> okay, Apostle. I think we go back to the beginning. Yes. You know, always the first principles <laughs> help us. How did God make them? Yeah. He made them in His own image, right, and likeness. What is the image of God? You know, and that, that's a whole study. Yeah. And so it begins there. Are we are we becoming in the image of God? Yeah. That's a blueprint. Mm. Because like you said earlier, and and Mars Monroe said this, because yeah. that brings us all the way to the beginning when a young man meets a lady. Yeah. You know, how are they? Are they ready in terms of first of all being conformed into his image yeah. and the image of his likeness, mm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So when we are Christ like the fruit of the spirit, Galatians five twenty two, mm -hmm. you know, love, joy, peace, patience, forbearance, you know, mm -hmm. kindness. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things we are looking at. Yeah. And Miles Monroe in his book, Single Married, Separated and Divorce, said something very powerful. He said, If you have an omelet of two eggs, mm -hmm. for that omelet to be good, the two eggs must be good. It doesn't yeah. matter how good one egg is. If the other one is bad, <laughs> that omelette is rotten. Yeah. And he gave that example. He said, wow. you mix the two yeah. and then you cook. Yeah. That omelette will be rotten. Yeah. And that's what happens. So we, we need to believe God and come to a place whereby people understand that when you want to get into this thing called marriage, you need to understand it's going to take the two of you. Wow. What you have said is so powerful. I feel, I feel the presence of God. And our viewers, listen, are you a good person? Are you that egg that is good within that, uh, what did you call it? The omelette. The omelette. Yes. Because men are blaming women, women are blaming men. Mm. But are you good? Yeah. And most of the single young people are still waiting for the Mr. Right and Miss Right. But are you right yourself? Um, in the process of dealing with a couple of people with troubled marriages, a statement came up sometime last year that really shook my world mm, because mm. the Holy Spirit asked me a question mm. concerning somebody. Mm. Is the person in the faith? Uh -huh. So in the marriage, you guys may have begun well, yeah. 
both of you met in the spirit, yeah. married in church mm. with a blessing from a man of God mm. and the family took off well. Are you still in the faith? Because when somebody left the image and that character yes. and the fruit of the spirit, yes. now you have become an ordinary citizen yeah. operating no longer in under flesh. biblical principles, mm -hmm. operating under the flesh. Yeah then you expose your partner in so much turmoil yeah. they do not know what to do because you never took it to your yes, spirit yeah, your spirit and i think that's what you're talking about that image that's what i'm talking Blueprint, about the i mean it's, it's that simple and when you look at all the challenges that we go through in marriage you trace them back to the form and the spirit yeah you can't run away from that and so, and so for me, Apostle, and, 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 and this is a wisdom. I'm sure you've come across that liturgical little book where when we start the, you know, we are wedding people, we say these the people should not get into it hurriedly, but with <laughs> careful consideration. No, those things, we are kind of throwing them out. But the, I think but the I'm people telling you, thought about The it. people who thought about those things, I'm finding us really just throwing out a lot of things that we have found and okay, some of the things are informed by little knowledge and understanding and poor revelation. Yeah. But there are a lot of good things we need to go back and ask ourselves. Why did the writer of this thing say we should enter into it carefully with consideration? <laughs> Taking your time. Yes. Because you want to be sure that I'm really ready for this. And yeah. as a person, I am, like you said, I'm in the faith. Yeah. I'm born again. I am a brother in the Lord. Mm. I know I am taking into my life a sister in the Lord and vice versa. Mm. That this person, God has a stake in their life. Mm. That my coming into their life should not complicate things for them in terms of their walk with God. Yeah. should be easier. Yeah. So when we begin to understand that God has a bigger stake in marriage than ourselves. Because where we go wrong, Apostle David, is where we begin to forget that actually... The biggest stakeholder in marriage is not even us, it's God. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. he's the one who started it. Yeah. And when you start something like an investment or business or a church like this, you are a big stakeholder because it's what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. And so as you walk into that, you want to be sure that you will not do anything to frustrate you know, the chief stakeholder's interest. Yeah. So, so what happens is we go into marriage and because of our own selfish interests, we want to be comfortable. We want to be, uh, we don't want to look like we are slaves. Mm -hmm. So we, we forget that God brought us together and put order that the husband is ahead mm -hmm. and the lady, of course, has her role there mm -hmm. and the children. So we get in there and we start bringing in all these secular ideals, not knowing that the reason why God organized this thing this way is because he wants a godly offspring. And there's a way in which if we don't lay the marriage, mm -hmm. the godly offspring will never come. It's actually like in mathematics, yeah. when you have all these formulas, <laughs> and I have found this uh, illustration very amazing, yeah. that if, if you remember those math yes, formulas, I do. If you move this A yeah. here, yeah. it's supposed to be A over B yeah. or, you know, then bracket yeah. X yeah. or Y. Yeah. Then you change yeah. the position of one of the letters yeah. in that in that equation. Mm. equation. You will not get the right result. Yeah. So even when established businesses yeah. that we've done a business plan, yeah. we've done a survey, yeah. we've done investigation, we've yeah. looked at the kind of investment and where and mm how we must act within a time frame. Yeah. Then when money begins to come in, somebody becomes greedy yeah. and changes a little equation. Equation. Yeah. You cannot get the same result and with the, within a couple of months and whatever that business will collapse. It's closed. Yeah. So it's the same thing for marriage. Yeah. If we don't ensure that the blueprint is being followed. Yeah. Just like in a construction. Yeah. If the architect drew it, mm. the government has approved it and then you decide to change rules you're going to change that building <clears throat> completely. And I think this is where we have the problem. The question we need to ask our people, whether they're in leadership, they're elders, they're yeah. deacons, they're mm. evangelists, mm. they're all kinds of ministers, including pastors, mm. are you still in the faith? Yeah. Though you're in the marriage. Yeah. Because then if you're not in faith, we need to send a very strong warning. Mm. If you're not in the faith, then oh, it's going to manifest very soon. It will. And you know, Apostle, I was just reading some statistics, and it's very worrying. They are saying there is really no significant difference in terms of the percentage of rate of divorce among Christians and non-Christians. Yes. It's very, very sad. Yeah. 
because then people are no longer following the blueprint and the values, yeah. biblical values. Yeah. People are living as general, general, <laughs> I don't want to use the Swahili phrase <coughs> because of, we are internationals. Yeah. But people are living ordinary citizens without any uh, biblical, you know, uh, principles in place. Yeah. People are not committed. Yeah. And then we have too many informers. Yeah. Too much uh, expanded space yeah. that everybody's listening to everybody without always going back mm. to the original mm. intention. And I think if our viewers, you are tuned in and you engaging in this conversation, mm. I think the first thing we said in this practical steps on the way forward mm. is returning to the blueprint, mm. returning to the manual, returning to the word of God. Check whether you are in the faith, yeah. whether you are growing the image of God mm. so that uh, things can be well. The other matter I found, mm. Bishop, is mm. as I was speaking recently in our church on matters on family, mm. uh, particularly in the East, I was trying to find how do we bring the redemption into the family. Yes. I found out by the Spirit and of course the wisdom of the word of God Wherever sin is introduced yeah. in the family, yeah. then corruption has come in. Yeah. The system has begun to ground to a halt, the system of the family. Mm. And that family will produce iniquities, mm. rebellion, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the next generation and mm -hmm. offspring and children mm -hmm. to the third and fourth generation. Yes. And I had to take the church back mm. to the Ten Commandments. Wow. So I began teaching the Ten Commandments. We read through each of them, just making a simple comment. Wow. And I said, I'm afraid, church, you have left the Ten Commandments to SDA. Wow. Uh, and I said, well, you try to sell me these Old Testament mm. uh, stuff. I said, try to dishonor your father and mother. Yeah, and see what Unless happens. You, try to steal. Yeah, yeah try just, to covet. Yeah, try to covet. And just say, I'm going to steal because yeah. this Old Testament, yeah. in the New Testament, we are under grace. Yeah. And you end up in jail. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so our listeners... <laughs> You know, and try to commit unto time. Yes, yes, you will see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, where the where the Romans three twenty three says, "For mm, all have sinned, sinned and come short of the glory of God." Mm. So, where sin yeah. removes the glory. Yes, it does. So the question is, what's going on in your marriage, mm. uh, listeners? Is is there any sin? If there is, mm. track it. Yes, and part it, it, remove it. Yeah then the glory shall come back amen and that process may not be a one weekend operation yeah yeah it may require a so major walk. change because mm -hmm. romans 8 will talk about the law of the spirit of life yeah versus the law of sin and death yeah so sin and death, death because sin will lead to death, death yeah. but the law of spirit, spirit. of life it's you know life. in christ jesus mm -hmm. so he that soweth in the things of the flesh mm -hmm. will reap corruption mm -hmm. decay yeah but he that soweth in the spirit mm -hmm. will reap Mm. Eternal, life. eternal life so these are bottom lines yeah yeah, yeah. and that and, and you know apostle paul uh, i mean apostle david it, it's not um, these things we try to look for complicated things they are not there <laughs> it's a very simple thing it, it's just what you have said you know take heed mm. your spirit because somebody said that when you see a successful marriage it's very unfortunate it's they say if you follow through you find that there is one spouse who has decided to pay the price oh my god and that's where the problem is there's one spouse who has decided to pay the price they take all the blame they are understanding they are flexible they are the ones who take blame for anything that has gone wrong and it shouldn't be like that mm. it shouldn't be like that in marriage it should be you know two people who are competing to give to each other because of what i told you you know yeah. Galatians 5.22, the law of the spirit, yeah. you know, love, joy, patience, as opposed to where we have these other two kinds of relationship, where you have in a relationship where people's hearts are messed up, mm. they are two takers, each trying to take away from each other as much as possible. I want to gain advantage over you, mm. um, benefit as much as I can at your expense, and your spouse is doing the same. Yeah. That relationship will die quickly. Mm. Or another one where there is one taker and one giver. We have situations where some ladies, they, they just do everything. They are the only ones who, they, 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 they give up their interests, their rights. They are the ones, that you, you know, a man comes home at midnight, <clears throat> nobody knew where they were, <clears throat> and they knock the gate, you have to go and open, wake up, cook for them, and, you know, take care of them. And the fellow does nothing, or vice versa. A lady can also be like that. Yeah. 
So you find a relationship like that, and again, it won't survive because it's a host parasite sort of relationship. Hey. But where you have two people who have come together, their hearts are softened by the love of God and the consideration that God is a key stakeholder mm. in this relationship, that we are in, in it together because God wants out of us mm. to get himself a, a godly offspring. Mm. For that reason, yeah. we will do everything to support each other. Yeah. And, and that's why when you look at Ephesians 5, because this mm -hmm. chapter we read a lot in, in weddings, yeah. and we forget that Apostle Paul was not actually in a marriage seminar. He no. was writing to a church. Yeah. Okay? And he starts from verse 1, the first thing he tells them, to walk in love. Mm -hmm. Okay? After he discusses about the walk in love, he talks about walking in the light from yeah. verse 8. Yeah. Okay? And then uh, later on, verse 15, he brings in wisdom. And I think you say that yeah. every couple must find wisdom to deal with their unique situations. Mm. I keep telling people, if you come to my house and see the way I relate with my wife and you are tempted to go and replicate that, it, ki it could kill your marriage that day. Yeah. Because the way I relate with my wife it's is not the way you relate with my wife, your wife, because these are two different ladies mm. and we have very different motivations and the things that make us do what we do. Mm. Then he goes on now to begin to talk about marriage and Christ. So mm. the apostle here now gets a revelation and brings the imagery of the church and Christ yeah. and then uses the earthly reality of marriage mm. to show us mm. the relationship between a husband and wife so the other blueprint we are looking for here is a blueprint of the relationship between christ and the church awesome how does christ relate with the church as a husband yeah and how does the wife the church relate with christ, christ? that's very powerful and then he says something powerful now addressing the issue of violence mm. he says in verse 20 28 so husbands, and I believe you should go the same to wives, mm -hmm. ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Mm -hmm. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. When I lift my hands to slap my wife, or when I do something to hurt her emotionally, or vex her mentally, how do I love myself? Because she is my flesh. Yeah. This is a blueprint, <clears throat> Apostle. Awesome. And it doesn't matter where people look for new... We are not going to get new things and new revelations. It is just as it is. And now I uh, appreciate uh, some statements I used to make. And you have just confirmed them. Yeah. That if only everyone lives a simple Christian life, <laughs> everything will work. It is true. Simple Christian life. Yeah. You will love, yeah. walk in the light. Yeah. You will not so. abuse, mm. you will not scheme evil, yeah. you will not hate, yeah. you are not malicious, yeah. you will not be violent, yeah. you, are, you know how to forgive <clears throat> and to apologize. Simple Christian life, you can actually live with him whom God has given you. You know, also I read a book called The Speed of Trust by a, a, a son of this uh, Stephen Covey. He the said, Speed. The Speed of Trust. Yeah talking about trust very good book mm -hmm. and he says uh, Stephen and his wife they used to drive a lot together mm -hmm. and just the two of them and so what would happen is as, as one is driving the other one would be lying at the back of, back seat sleepy yeah. and so so they go then they would change over so this time it is the wife driving yeah and so it is time for them to change over yeah. so Stephen comes out from where he's sleeping and goes goes to his side of to drive the car and assumes the wife has has gone has, has gone back <laughs> and just drives off oh. and leaves the wife standing in the middle of nowhere oh, and no. drives many kilometers then of course luckily the lady had a phone cell phone so she rang the police and then they were able to communicate with oh, this man uh -huh. please tell him he has left me here <laughs> and so the policeman stopped this guy he's just driving and he thinks the wife is lying at the back yeah unknown to him when he got into the car he thought the wife had already entered so he just drove off Wow. So the police say, Mr. Kavi, where is your wife? She says, she's just right here behind me. He said, no, 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 just check. And he checks and his horror. The wife is not there. <laughs> so it's like, how did this happen? And wow. the lady, you know, says, you know, I knew my husband cannot leave me. He thought I was already in the car. Look at that. Wow, that's trust. Look at that. 
So other people would say, you know, you have been trying to kill me. You wanted me to be eaten by lions. You wanted to get rid of me. <laughs> so these are things that must be developed over time whereby, yeah. because mistakes occur, Apostle David. Yeah. There are things you do to your wife when you mean you don't actually, are not even aware you've yeah, done something wrong. Absolutely. So if there is a crack, mm -hmm. it will be just amplified because of a very innocent thing. Yeah. that should be handled with a lot of wisdom. And that's why we are saying all these things. We need to look at the track record of our family. Yeah. How have you related over time? Yeah. And how are you trying to heal the cracks in your marriage so that in the event that you just make a silly mistake that people do, it doesn't become, you know, a, a, you don't create a, 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 a storm in mm. a teacup, like they say. Absolutely. Yes. As a church and God's people, scripturally, we need to be those that want to solve everything that shows up in the marriage yeah. and uh, I like what you said and I wanted to add therefore that in the Beatitudes yeah. Jesus in chapter 5 of Matthew says uh, blessed are the peacemakers verse 9 peacemakers for they shall be called sons, sons of God, of God. <clears throat> living a simple Christian life mm. should help us resolve the great crisis of marriage mm. Everyone must seek out to be a peacemaker mm. because he's a son of God. Mm. So because we are Christians and believers in the word of God, mm -hmm. I usually say, therefore, everyone within the marriage must, shall I say, compete to be the first one to break the ice. Yes. Because we have a big scenario, Bishop, where yeah. people and spouses are waiting <laughs> for each other to, to, to say break. something. <laughs> And then, because it's been tension. Sometimes, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's me. Yeah. I don't understand how people can keep quiet to each other for a week. Yeah, it's, it's, it can't work. And we are still in the faith. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So I think it's a wake up call yeah. to those that are experiencing relational issues. Why do you keep quiet? Well, because I'm wronged and I'm hurting and I'm gonna, not going to speak. Mm. So actually, you are punishing the other person mm. through silence. Mm. But why don't we then become peacemakers? And peacemakers, yeah. uh, somebody wrote and said, are uh, uh, those who generate light mm. and not heat. Because when you generate heat, yeah. you're going to make the issue yeah, bigger. worse mm. and bigger. But mm. if you generate light, yeah. illumination, revelation, yeah. be the first one to break the ice, be the first one to want reconciliation. Mm. They say it's a mature one mm. who approaches the other one yeah. to bring a solution to mm. the problem. Mm. And so if we call every person within the marriage, that is the spouses, to want to follow some of these attitudes that we need to be, because mm. this was the ABC teaching for discipleship, yes, yes. for Christ, mm. for his disciples. Mm. And he, he was saying, you guys, we're going to minister together. Mm. And we're going to be together three and a half years before I go. Mm. They didn't know how long it was to take. <laughs> and I know you guys are going to have different anointings and give different gifts. Yeah. You come from different backgrounds. Yeah. But you, peacemaker. if you're going to be a son, mm. peacemaker. Mm. And so I think that's a very major call yeah. to the marriages to mm. bring resolution and mm. so forth. Mm. And wanting to seek out the other person mm. and not punish each other through silence yeah. or punish each other because of what they did. Mm. The forgiveness, you know, mm. and so forth. I don't know how many times do you forgive? Well, ah. the least uh, Jesus gave us a formula. Mm. We don't want to go there right yeah, now. Yeah. So maybe you comment on some of this stuff as we yes, wind up. I'll just say we begin we, to wind up uh, because now time is almost gone. Actually, I'll, I'll probably say just one or two things. Also, yeah. a very simple thing. Please, thank you. I am sorry. Please, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Those I'm three sorry. words are miraculous. Wow. It's difficult that you learn to use that and mean it because normally when you are very proud, you will not say please. You will not say thank you. You oh. will not easily say I'm sorry. So those three words, they help deal with the spirit of pride in a person. And if you follow through, you discover a lot of things that are making people unable to live together. Is somebody just too proud to say please or I'm sorry or thank you. So tonight somebody needs to go back to your spouse say please i'm sorry thank you thank you what about the one who is being told like that say yeah. uh -huh, i've been <laughs> waiting for you to <laughs> to realize you are wrong <laughs> and uh, and they refuse 
that, that is where now um, that's where the the reciprocation comes in. Yeah, it is lack of wisdom to beat somebody who is already down. That's a powerful statement. Do you hear that before we close? It is lack of wisdom, even in normal uh, sporting, even in wrestling <laughs> or boxing. If somebody falls, if somebody falls, even the referee will yeah. will actually tell you, no, 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 wait until they stand on their feet. Then you resume the fight, and they will even make sure they can see. You know, they do like this. If they can't see, then they will stop the match yeah. because it is illegal and it is immoral to kill somebody who's already dead. You don't do that. So I think for that person who fails to recognize that this is a good opportunity to build that which is broken, it is also pride on their part to take advantage of the brokenness of the other person. Broken people are not trodden upon. They yeah. are lifted up and healed. So if your spouse comes to you and has not been doing certain things and begins to do them, mm. don't start asking them, oh, who talked to you or where are you coming from? Mm. Recognize that this is a positive thing. Yeah. You see, medical doctors in any institution never look for signs of death. They look for signs of life. I like that too. If you go to the hospital, a doctor will tell you, today the person winked and they are very excited. Wow. Today the finger moved. They are excited. Wow. But they will not tell you, you know, the, if the finger never moved, they will be very quiet. They will mm. say many things. Because mm. for them, they are looking for life. So awesome. we must look for life. And this is a very powerful conclusion, Bishop. <laughs> we must look for a sign of life in every family and marriage and the relationship. Yes. And we just want to be very grateful that you took your time to engage with us right here on the Apostolic Clinic. And uh, it's been a great joy. We believe there is hope for families. Yes. And we've been talking about returning them to a blueprint because I'm telling you, God's word forever remains the anchor for giving us the hope we need for our own souls. Mm. But domestic violence, whether it is uh, emotional, mm. we don't advocate, mm. we must stop yeah. destroying each other. Okay. Or physical, yeah. we must stop or even verbal. Mm. And if you are in trouble, please seek out for help. Mm. If the pastor is not a professional, yes. you know, there are also professional yeah, counselors within the Christian yeah. church yeah. who can be able to help mend and bring healing. It's our prayer you will be restored just in case you are in a mess for the church must stand and our faith must continue to shine mm. within the community amen awesome amen uh, with those few words we are yeah. done yeah we're done so apostle clinic will be back next monday see you and that time we look forward to have pastor team Wang with us who's our host god bless you my name apostle david juma and bishop stanley Maleli. thank you we'll see you next week mm -hmm.